The animation begins by showing a scene in ancient times, in a place close to Manchester, a bunch of early humans struggled to find food. One day, something incredible happened which was a meteorite fell from the sky and landed on the ground. Miraculously, the humans survived the impact, and some of them approached the meteorite, which had a round shape. When they touched it with their hands, they felt its intense heat. But when they switched to using their feet, they accidentally kicked the meteorite here and there, and they found themselves playing a game. They tried to score the first goal, and this was the birth of the first football moment, which they later captured in their rock paintings. Many years later, a young man named Doug and his pig Hognob had a mission to wake up the leader of the Stone Tribe, Chief Bobnar, and get him ready to lead the group. Without delay, Doug arrived and suggested that the chief should try to hunt bigger animals than just rabbits. However, the chief didn't want to do that because the ancestral stone showed only small animals as targets. Despite Bobner's reluctance, he still decided to organize a hunting trip. Soon after, they consisted of Barry, Treber, Magma, Gravel, Uspo, Thongo, Grubup, and Emac. Before they left, Doug led them in prayer, and with the prayer completed, their hunting journey began. Shortly after, as they entered the forest, Chief Bobnar spotted a rabbit and signaled everyone to catch it. Fortunately, the rabbit was caught, and they had a celebration. After they were content with hunting rabbits, Doug thought it was nothing out of the ordinary since rabbits were small game. Suddenly, Hognob sensed a threat lurking in the forest. Then, Chief Bobnar quickly signaled them to be quiet and confirmed the danger by throwing a stone, which caused arrows to fly in response. Suddenly, a bronze-armored mammoth appeared and wreaked havoc in the valley where the Stone Tribe lived. Seeing that, Chief Bobnar and the others ran for their lives, while Doug saved Hognob from being trampled. However, Chief Bobnar abandoned Doug, who stayed behind to investigate the attacker's identity. He discovered that the culprit was Nuth, the leader of the Bronze Tribe, who had come to excavate the metal in the Stone Tribe's valley. At that time, Doug was furious upon learning this and decided to take action. He launched an attack on Nuth, and during the fight, he was hit by a destruction ball and fell into a cart. Nuth then took him to the Bronze Tribe's settlement, where Doug met a girl named Guna, who sold Teflon. All of a sudden, a loud noise that sounded like a gong echoed through the air. Following that, a group of people walked into the stadium all at once. Doug, who was among the crowd, was asked to give 50 schnookles but he didn't have any. As a result, he was chased by the guards. Fortunately, he managed to escape and found himself in a room where he was surprised to find a change of clothes. It turned out that Doug was mistaken for a real Bronzio club football player. At that time, he felt confused and wanted to run away, but his teammates insisted he stay and even assigned him to guard the goalpost. Despite not knowing much about the game, Doug was ordered to take charge of the ball. However, he accidentally scored a goal for the opposing team during a free kick, which caused his team captain to become angry. Suddenly, someone then showed up and accused Doug of stealing his uniform. But then, Doug eventually realized that he was actually a stone man, and was chased away by Nuth. Before this, he challenged real Bronzio to a soccer match, and if his team won, Nuth would have to return the valley and stop bothering the stone tribe. Then, Nuth quickly agreed to this proposal, seeing an opportunity to earn money from the two tribes. Soon after, Doug returned to his group holding the ball and urged them to practice hard so they could win the game against real Bronzio. The stakes were high as losing meant a lifetime of working in the mines. However, Bobner interrupted, saying that they had never played ball before. Doug then showed them a painting that depicted the stone tribe playing ball, and from that moment on, the chief and his tribe began to believe. After that, they started their practice sessions just before the match day, which happened to be on a night of the full moon. There, Doug set the goal, and they practiced kicking the ball, with Hognob being replaced by a pig. Uspo's kick missed the goal by a long shot and landed in the valley. Meanwhile, Nuth was busy thinking about the money he could make from the match between the two tribes when he was interrupted by a messenger bird carrying a message from Queen Ufifa who was out of town. The message conveyed her frustration with Nuth for arranging a football match between the tribes. She did not want her tribe to lose to what she considered primitive creatures, so she threatened him to ensure a win. The next morning, Doug woke up his friends to continue practicing, but they were getting tired and desperate. Uspo even ate the ball because he was hungry. Fortunately, from a distance, they saw a duck, which turned out to be a giant duck that went on a rampage and burst their only ball. At that moment, Doug became sad and went off alone. Soon after, Bobner came to talk to Doug about giving up the ball game since the Stone Tribe didn't have a ball and couldn't play. Despite their ancestors having played, it was just a story. But then, Doug came up with an idea to steal the ball from the Bronze Stadium with Hognob. But unfortunately, he fainted after falling into the stands, causing a commotion that was heard by Nuth, who was in the bathroom. Shortly after, Hognob came over to help, but was mistaken for a mass use by Nuth who mocked the stone tribe as losers. This made Hognob annoyed. Meanwhile, Doug saw Guna playing ball alone and got caught. 
He told her that he wanted to steal the ball and Guna helped him. Unfortunately, they were caught by the guards. The next morning, Doug woke up his friends and introduced Guna as their new player and coach to face real Bronzio. Then, Guna also introduced the core players of their team. However, Gravel became unsure about fighting real Bronzio after hearing about their players' impressive skills. However, Guna calmed her down by reminding her that real Bronzio's players may be too focused on individual glory, which could be their weakness. After that, Doug added that the Stone Tribe's strength lies in their unity and teamwork. This motivated the team to practice and even Bobnar, who was old, joined in. They trained hard, including physical exercises in the desert, and prepared themselves for the upcoming match. They even had their own proud team uniform. Meanwhile, Nuth, the leader's bodyguard, panicked when he heard that the Stone Tribe found a painting of football in a cave. He learned that there was also a painting depicting the Stone Tribe's failure to play ball, which gave him an evil plan. On the other hand, Doug was happy to see his friends playing skillfully until he kicked the ball to the valley's border and was kidnapped by the Bronze Warrior. Soon after, Nuth brought Doug before him to show him a painting in the cave depicting the Stone Tribe's ancestors' defeat in a football match. This made Doug hesitant to play in the upcoming match, which was just a day away. However, Newt's evil plan made Doug feel inferior, thinking that they were just cave creatures hunting rabbits. Luckily, Hognub helped revive Doug, and he ran off somewhere. The following day was the start of the football game, and people were selling tickets for 100 schnookles. Newt was happy to have earned some money, but then Queen Ufifa arrived and took charge. She brought a football commentator with her, and even though Newt started the event, Doug appeared on the field. Meanwhile, Hognub showed Bobnar a picture of his cave. Doug then exposed Newt's evil plan, which was to make him give up the game and work as a miner. When Queen Ufifa found out, she was disappointed and Newt chased the audience away. But suddenly, a giant duck carrying the Stone Tribe team flew over and landed on the field. Then, Bobner convinced Doug that the paintings on the rock were just pictures and that they were a strong team capable of winning back their home. This boosted Doug's confidence and made him fearless against Real Bronzio. However, Real Bronzio managed to score two goals against the Stone Tribe, which made Newt and Queen Ufifa excited. Unbeknownst to them, the first round had ended. Moving on to the second half, Doug reassured his friends by recalling their practice sessions. And as expected, the Stone Tribe team caught up with Real Bronzio, making the score 3-2. Eventually, Guna scored the third goal, making it a tie. There, Newt became angry and threatened Real Bronzio's players if they did not win. Later on, Newt approached the referee and knocked him unconscious. Surprisingly, he replaced the referee in the third round and allowed Real Bronzio's players to play roughly, even pretending to be sick to get a penalty. However, Doug was more concerned about Bobnar's well-being than the game. Then, Guna protested to the referee, but her plea was ignored. Soon after, Real Bronzio kicked the ball, and although the goalkeeper was from the Stone Tribe team, Bobnar apologized to Doug for not being able to fight until the end, and went to sleep. Then, Hognob took over as the goalkeeper. As the last minutes of the match approached, Hognob miraculously defended the ball, causing it to fly into the sky. When the ball came down, Real Bronzio's players scrambled for it. Then, in the midst of a thrilling soccer game, the Stone Tribe banded together to help their teammate, Doug, score a goal that led to their victory over the Stone Tribe. Not long after, the referee called an end to the match and the Stone Tribe disbanded in defeat, while Newth was apprehended by the referee. Doug then shook hands with the captain of Real Bronzio and impressed the queen with his ball-playing skills. Suddenly, Doug noticed someone dressed up in a mouse costume stealing all the schnookles on stage. Luckily, with the help of Guna and a giant duck, they were able to catch the thief and discovered that it was Newth all along. In the end of the animation, Queen Ufifa presented Doug with the ball trophy while allowing the Stone Tribe to return to their valley. The victory was also documented in rock paintings that celebrated their triumph. The following morning, Doug and his comrades went about their usual hunting routine. The animation ends. The moral lesson of this animation is don't be afraid to try new things or kick things with your feet. You never know what fun you might discover. And who knows, maybe one day you'll find yourself accidentally becoming a professional football player and saving your tribe from an evil tyrant, just like Doug. But always remember, it's never too late to chase your dreams, even if you're a Stone Age man with no idea how to play soccer.